Okay, we're gonna do a demonstration of removing a dome hand or AN470 rivet. So the first step is to emphasize the little dimple in the center of the rivet with a center punch. This is an auto center punch that just involves putting it into the dimple or where you want the center punch to be and push. If you don't have that, uh, a standard center punch with a small, you know, little ball peen hammer could be used to, to get the same result. So now we've got a rivet that has the center punch on the center of the manufactured head to help us uh, stay centered when we're drilling. One benefit in drilling uh, rivets uh, or drilling holes in structure uh, for any reason when there's a reflective surface is using the reflection to be able to maintain alignment of the drill because we want to drill square to the surface so try and not cast a shadow there and if the drill is tilted the reflection is no longer aligned with the actual drill bit so when whenever you're perfectly squared up on it the reflection you're seeing in the metal surface should look like a continuation of what you see when you look at the actual drill bit so in some instances there isn't the ability to do that because in this case we have an anodized wing spar but you can take and just make little patches of aluminum with a hole in it that will fit over the rivet uh, or the location that you're drilling uh, at the moment. And on this one, I have some double sticky tape on it so that we can just stick it in place over the rivet that we're dealing with. And now it's not a very big area, but it does provide a reflection that you can still look at in reference to the drill bit and see whether you're square. Now, what usually works best doing this is position the eye that you're looking at the reflection with just behind the back of the drill so that you're kind of just barely looking down the side of the drill and looking along the length of the drill bit at the reflection and determining when you're straight. So if I tilt down, you can see the reflection and the drill bit are no longer in alignment with each other. If I bring it up, that looks pretty straight right there. So then we wanna start drilling on a eighth inch rivet or an AN uh, 470-80-4 with a drill bit that's smaller than the original hole size, which was a number 30. So in this case, we're using a number 40. That's gonna give us a lot of margin to avoid accidentally drilling into the structure. And um, it also starts in the center punch much more readily without wandering off to the side because it's, it's a really small drill bit that matches that center punch. So when I'm squared up, some good amount of pressure. And we're trying to drill just deep enough that we're going to the depth of the rivet head thickness. Now I did wander off to the side, but because we're not drilling deeper than the thickness of the head, we're not drilling into the actual spar structure. So now we'll switch to a number 30. And because I did go to the side slightly, now I can use the reflection 
and angle the drill bit to try and make it go back towards the center and then straighten out. And now if we look straight onto the rivet, the hole is, is nearly in the center. Should be close enough to remove the rivet head. So then we use a pin punch that's matching the hole diameter, or at least closely matching. This is an eighth inch pin punch, which is pretty close to number 30. Uh, I sharpened this uh, this morning to make sure it had a really crisp, sharp corner on it so that it would grab inside the rivet well. And we just push to the bottom and just tilt the rivet head off. In instances where we're removing a rivet from a really thick amount of structure, because th th this video isn't just about removing these specific rivets uh, from the wing spar, there can be a lot of rivet in that depth of hole uh, that, that has a lot of friction and resistance to being removed. So one thing that can be uh, really beneficial in helping the rivet to come out is if you drill down the center of the rivet slightly, once again, with a smaller diameter drill bit. And in this case, since we know that we got centered up pretty well, the, the drill bit that we were using previously has left a point in the bottom of that hole that the smaller drill bit will center on really well. So we can go back to this one and using our reflection, We can make sure that we're squared up. And remove some of the material from the middle of the rivet. What that's gonna do is as, as we try to start pulling the rivet out, it's gonna allow the rivet to collapse on itself and and remove some of that friction or grab within the, the sides of the, the bore of the hole where the rivet is located. So now we're ready to uh, remove the remainder of the rivet. And we're gonna do that by grabbing a hold of the shop head, the side that was produced in the shop when the rivet was originally installed. One of the keys I've found over the years to making a rivet much easier to get out is rotation. If, if you can get a hold of a rivet and get it to turn in the hole, so I'm gonna grab it with our special pliers here. And this one's a little challenging because of the nut plate here, but squeeze hard. And notice I was, I was twisting a little bit as I was starting to pull. And regardless of the Regardless of the diameter of the rivet, whether it's the small 332nd flush rivets, these eighth inch rivets, even really big rivets like we have in the spar, which uh, nobody should have to be removing for any reason. Uh, but it's pretty much universal. If you can get the rivet to rotate, that breaks that bond within the texture, you know, on the surface of the metal inside of the, the hole bore and on the outer surface of the rivet. And it, it greatly changes uh, how difficult it, it pulls out. So that one came out nice and clean and, um, and, and didn't take a lot of effort at all. So sometimes when you're doing the initial drilling on the rivet head, things don't always go as planned and you end up with one that is quite a bit off center. Uh, you still always only want to be drilling deep enough uh, for the depth, the thickness of the rivet head so that you're not going into the structure underneath. So it's best to avoid messing around with the drill and trying to drill more to be able to get the, the head to come off. You need to stop whenever you've gotten the, the depth of the rivet head. So th this one is quite a bit off center. We'll try the punch and see if it will come off. 
but it likely will not. So that side came loose because because that's the side that the, the hole was offset towards. But we need to get the entire rivet head off. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to remove our little reflective tool here and get it out of the way. And now I'm going to take the pin punch that we were using, the eighth inch punch that we were using uh, in that hole, and I'm going to position it on the side of the rivet that is still connected to the main body of the rest of the rivet. And holding it as flat as possible to still allow, to still allow for some clearance for, for a small hammer, I'm just gonna, gonna strike it a little bit laterally across the face of the rivet. Like that. You don't have to push really hard against the surface. If you have a uh, you know, nicely sharpened uh, punch and that, that took the rest of the rivet head off where it was still attached to the shank there. And now we can move on to uh, the removal process that was shown for a rivet that is drilled well on center. Okay, so switching over to uh, the other rivet style, which is uh, AN426 uh, flush head. In some ways, this is a little bit easier because we're not trying to drill onto a round surface. So the initial drilling there won't be as much of a tendency for the drill bit to want to wander because we're actually drilling onto something that's flat. But it's still good practice to use a center punch. So I'll center punch in the dimple. And because of the way that the flush rivets install being compressed by a flat rivet set or a flat rivet set in a rivet gun, sometimes the dimples aren't as defined as they are on the round head rivets. So what I'm even doing here is I'm I'm tilting the center punch a little bit and going to hit it again to kind of drift the center punch mark closer to being right on the center of the rivet. It's still off a little bit, but it's going to be close enough. And then if you choose to, You can put your mirror tool in place. And then with the eighth inch rivet, I'm gonna start out with a number 40 drill bit again to drill a pilot hole in the center of the rivet. checking to look how deep it is and once again trying to work to only going as deep as the thickness of the rivet head. Now I'm going to take this off at this point because it's not quite centered on there because of the size of it but I've got a pilot hole that's on the center and now we're going to switch to a number 30 and using the same process as the round head style rivet and enlarge that hole just deep enough to 
to drill the thickness of the rivet head. Then back to our eighth inch pin punch. And the head's off. So in this case, we do have a lot of thickness that the rivet goes through. Uh, we got a, a lamination of two eighth inch parts. So that's a quarter inch plus the, the thickness of the spar web and the flange on the rib. So there's, there's a lot of rivet length there. So there's a lot of friction inside that hole from when the rivet swelled up uh, when it was being originally installed. So once again, we're gonna to wanna to drill down the center. And now that the head's out of the way, I'm gonna put my little reflective tool back so that I can verify that I'm drilling square to the surface, which should be straight down the middle of the rivet. And the drill is gonna center in the point that was made by the bigger drill bit. So I'm about an eighth inch in now. So we're gonna see if that is enough to let the rivet break loose and easily come out. So once again, grab it hard, and the key is getting it to rotate. And with just that amount of movement, I, I felt it loosen up a lot and started turning much easier. And then I can start prying it out. out so keep in mind when you're using this tool parts that you're not going to be replacing so i was trying to be careful not not to twist it and pry into the the spar stub we are replacing the rib so we don't really have to have any concern about any of the surface of parts that are going to be thrown away anyway and replaced with new so now we'll do an example of one of the rivets that's typical in the, the skins and lighter structure, uh, which is the, the flush 332nd rivets. Those also have a dimple, so it gives us something to, to reference with the center punch. So that's a better defined uh, center point on the rivet. And then we'll start with the standard size drill bit for that rivet, which is a number 40. And now in this case, we're working on a surface that has uh, unprimed skin. So I can use the reflection of the skin to determine when, when I am aligned and squared up to the rivet by referencing the rivet or the drill bit reflection. Once again, trying to only go the depth of the rivet head. And if we can't get a hold of it and get it, get it to pop, then we're not quite deep enough but need to just creep up on it a little at a time. Just go just a little more. And I'm kind of rocking the punch all the way around uh, so that it, it's, it's tilted off to the side around the full circumference of the rivet and that kind of breaks it loose uh, all the way around the outside edge. The rest of the removal for the small rivet like this 
is pretty much the same as what's been demonstrated so far. In situations where it is through thick structure, like right here, um, if, if we had a, a number of parts stacked up that we were only going to be replacing one part, we want to make sure we don't do any damage uh, to any of those other parts. Uh, a common practice that a lot of people will use is driving rivets out uh, with, a, with a pin punch once they've drilled the, the rivet head off. The reason we're not showing that technique is because in those instances where you need to protect some of that structure from you know, getting distorted uh, or any other damage, using the, the pliers tool and twisting breaks the rivet loose and and really reduces the risk of, of causing any damage uh, to any of the other structure. But even with this rivet, we can use the technique of drilling down the center, but we'd have to go to even a smaller drill bit. So we'd use a 16th inch drill bit diameter for the 332nds rivet hole. And removing a little bit of the material in the center uh, can greatly uh, ease the, the removal process because it, once again, it uh, allows the rivet to collapse on itself. So I'm gonna to attempt to remove this one without doing uh, any additional uh, undersized drilling through the center. And once again, I'm squeezing and trying to rotate and getting it to turn is a big key in getting it to come out. Now this one looks like it's not going to go because it, it had a really short shop head on it. So this one we probably will end up uh, drilling down the center slightly but not all the way through and using a 16th inch pin punch which will match that undersized hole and and put that in that center hole that we drilled and uh, back up the opposite side uh, with, with a bucking bar or some other heavy tool and drive it out. So I have a 16th inch diameter drill bit now. It will center well in the, the point that was left uh, on the rivet by the, the larger drill bit. Once again, I'm using the reflection to make sure that I'm squared up well. And I'm just drilling down the center a bit. I want to try and avoid drilling all the way through because we want some material there for the pin punch to be able to drive on at the bottom of this hole. So you want to just go down just a little bit. Now we'll grab a bucking bar and a pin punch and a hammer and we will uh, drive that out. So just to summarize the process, we're re or increasing the emphasis of the dimple in the rivet by using a center punch so that uh, you have a better chance of drilling on the center of the rivet as, as you start to drill. It's an extra step but we recommend using the smaller drill bit initially because as mentioned before, it will center in that uh, center punched mark uh, much better than the, the larger number 30 drill bit will. So at least starting for a short distance with the smaller drill bit is a really good idea. Uh, and then you can jump to the, the number 30 if it is a number 30 rivet. If it's or, or an eighth inch rivet, sorry. If it's the 332nd rivet, uh, then we're already using the drill bit uh, that we're gonna use for that size, but it's small enough in diameter that it, it starts pretty well in, in the center punch that was made. So then we're drilling deep enough to provide a pilot hole for the bigger drill bit if, if it's the larger rivets and we need to step up to the number 30, or we're going just deep enough for the rivet thickness, rivet head thickness, if it's a number 40. Then we're snapping the head off. If 
that doesn't uh, go as planned, uh, you can um, use the, the pin punch and the hammer uh, to remove the head the rest of the way, uh, as demonstrated before. And I can't emphasize enough, when you finally get to the point of removing the rivet uh, with the pliers tool, rotation is the key. The very first motion you should be making after squeezing is trying to rotate the rivet. That will break the bond of the rivet inside the hole and will, will make it much easier to remove. Sometimes, even drilling the small rivets, things don't go as planned, and you end up with uh, your initial uh, drilling of the head drifted off the center quite a bit. I can already tell that uh, there's no way that I'm gonna be able to pop the head off of this one uh, with it drilled off center this much. So as long as you stop before you get too deep and you're going into uh, the material of uh, the part uh, under the rivet head, it still can be salvaged without uh, causing any damage. So it's, it's not totally intuitive, but what I'm actually gonna do is switch to a bigger drill bit. So now I've gone back to a number 30. And what I'm gonna do is try and drill on the rivet head to remove uh, as, as much of the body of the rivet head as I can, because that'll greatly weaken it and then give us a chance to pop the rivet out. Mm -hmm. So uh, we're, we're drifted in that direction uh, by quite a bit. So I am going to put the drill in to where the side of the drill bit is, is almost aligning with the edge of that smaller hole and then I'm going to drill towards the center just a little at a time. And now the, the point on the bigger drill bit has moved that center point that I have something to, to kind of drill into. Notice I'm turning really slow. So recommend you use a, a battery or electric drill because air drills, you cannot turn slow enough uh, to control how, how fast uh, you go down in depth. So now I'm gonna grab the rivet and notice with just a little bit of rotation uh, the head was weakened enough that it popped off. Now I'll do a couple more turns and that frees it up in the hole and it's out and we didn't do any damage to the skin at all.